This is the Luni 4040 Pro, a 550 euros CNC machine with a 400 by 400 mm cutting area and a 100 watts spindle, which aims at being an affordable router with a big working area and good cutting and engraving abilities. On paper, it looks like a solid option for makers and woodworkers, with its compact size, versatility, also allowing the addition of a laser module for engraving. Unfortunately, I wasn't really impressed by its performance, so stick around to find out why. The machine arrives extremely well packaged, with everything clearly labeled and organized. Assembly was surprisingly fast thanks to the clearly explained instructions. You just need to assemble the base, add the left and right Y axis, install the X axis gantry, and mount the spindle. The machine obviously comes with everything you need to use it, including clamps, a USB with the needed software, and the Z-probe to easily zero the bit. For a CNC at this price point, that's a very good start. Now let's take a look at its main features. The cutting area is 400 by 400 mm, which is the standard for machines in this category, and should allow you to use this machine for actually useful projects, not limited by size. The Z-axis has 90mm of travel, giving you some room to work with thicker materials. It has limit switches on all three axes, which means that the motor automatically stops if you reach the physical travel limit. This is a welcomed feature, but I honestly don't know how precise or durable these limit switches will be, since they are not standard limit switches, but there are just uh, cheap push buttons. Still, uh, I've had uh, zero issues with them, but I would have preferred to see proper limit switches. Moving on to the front and back panels, they are held on with magnets, making them easy to remove if you need to work on material longer than that 400mm bed size. The control box uh, itself uh, swings out of the way, so you can uh, use the full width if you ever need to. In terms of motion, the Z-axis is ball screw driven, which provides accuracy and rigidity, while the X and Y axis are belt driven, which should be more precise and faster than lead screws, but it's a whole other world compared to ball screws, which offer way more rigidity and precision. Still, at this price point, ball screws are not expected on all three axes, and belts should still make it possible to cut wood with no problem, but we'll see about that. The stepper motors are standard NEMA 17s, each one with a knob, letting you manually move the axis when setting up your work. The included spindle is 100 watts, which is uh, fine for engraving and very light cutting. If you need more power, you can upgrade to a 500 watt spindle, and it is also compatible with certain uh, small palm routers, which uh, will definitely increase its cutting capabilities. If you want, you can also remove the spindle and install a laser module, transforming the machine into a laser engraver. This flexibility is a nice plus for a small workshop, where one tool may need to serve multiple purposes. The machine includes a standard 1/8 inch collet, so you can use a variety of common router bits, engraving bits and end mills, a bunch of which are already included when purchasing the machine. Moving on to software, the Lini 4040 Pro comes with Candle software, which is really just a gerbil controller like Gcode Sender. That means that you will need a separate CAD and CAM software to design your project and generate the toolpath and G-code needed to operate the machine. For that reason I opted to use Easel both to generate the G-code and to send it to the machine, due to the much simpler and easy to use interface. Still, I would have liked if an offline controller was added, since it allows you to operate the machine without needing to have the PC connected. With the specs out of the way, let's do some test projects. First, I engraved my logo on a piece of painted hardwood, using a 30 degrees V-bit, cutting out the contour with this two flute end mill. The engraving came out actually quite nice, with some imperfections on the finish, but likely due to the material I chose not being ideal. Overall, it made for a good result. Cutting the contour is where I truly realized the limitations of this machine. Staying conservative with the settings, I've set the cut depth to 2 mm, and the speed to 1000 mm per minute feed rate. Starting the job, it immediately failed, with the X-axis motor skipping steps straight away, sending the bit in the wrong direction, straight into the engraving. 
This is a pretty bad result, considering that I've tested machines at the same price point that were able to cut steel at these exact same settings. And not being able to cut wood at 2 mm depth of cut and 1000 mm per minute is not acceptable in my opinion. I decided to try again with 600 mm per minute feed rate and 1 mm depth of cut. And this time the machine managed to cut the contour just fine, but uh, at those speeds uh, it's honestly not really usable, taking about 20 minutes to cut this circle, something that a more powerful machine would have done literally 10 times faster. Also the machine made a truly horrible sound when cutting, and I promptly kept my hand on the emergency stop button for the entirety of the cut since it didn't expire me confidence even for a single second. In the end the machine managed to finish the cut and the results were overall quite nice, but it took definitely too much time, needing to slow it down quite a bit. That's not actually a problem related to the stepper motors, but it's the spindle that is just too weak to handle any form of serious cutting. For that you will definitely want to upgrade to a 500 or 1000 watts one, but still, the single X-axis stepper motor will always struggle to move the bit inside the material, especially because of the belt-driven actuation. I wanted to give another chance to this machine, so I've designed this uh, test piece, this time to be cut out of soft plywood. Fortunately, this time uh, it went smoothly, but the settings were still quite slow, 600mm per minute feed rate and 1.5mm depth of cut. Dimensional accuracy was uh, fine, with the true dimensions being uh, close to spec, but obviously a machine at this price point will not hold super tight tolerances. For the last test uh, I swapped the spindle with the included 10 watt laser engraver. 10 watts uh, isn't a huge power number, but it makes it very possible to engrave a wide range of materials. In fact, I've engraved my logo on wood and on stainless steel with amazing results, in line with any other laser engraver that I've tried, even comparable to machines three times the price. Overall, the machine didn't honestly live up to my expectations, being basically good only for engraving. The spindle is just too weak to reach any usable cutting speed. Still, it is a great machine if you just need to make a couple of projects without caring about cutting speeds and you are willing to set the feed rate and depth of cut to some very conservative settings. Keep in mind that uh, all the problems I faced will be certainly solved by upgrading the spindle and using bigger end mills, making this machine actually quite nice. The addition of the laser engraver definitely brings back some value, working perfectly fine with results comparable to any other dedicated laser engraver that I've tried before. The belt-driven V-wheel, X and Y axis, limits its rigidity compared to linear rails, but should uh, still be rigid enough to cut aluminum if paired with a properly powerful spindle. So, would I recommend it? Well, if you're looking for a first CNC to learn on, or you primarily want to do engraving, decorative work and a very light cutting, then yes, the Ligny 4040 Pro definitely has a place in a small workshop or maker space. But if you need to batch out larger projects or cut a harder material with speeds and precision, you'll want to look at more powerful and rigid options. That's it for this video, if you want to purchase this machine there is a link below, I will see you in the next one!